Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about why this storm right here will cause the polar vortex to disrupt, sending colder air into the U.S., causing problems in the month of November. So let's start off this morning with the overall satellite picture and it has to take you all the way out here into the West Pacific of this storm that is just now developing, which is now labeled Invest. 93W and all indications are this is going to be rapidly intensifying over the coming days and going to be a typhoon if not a formidable typhoon by the time we get into your Halloween time frame around October 31st you can actually see this really starting to spin up here out here in the West Pacific really trying to get its act together and coming becoming a formidable typhoon but all indications are uh, with the overall ensemble guidance not only does it have it forming but it's going to be another recurving typhoon and that's going to be a significant uh, indication of what's to come down the road so as this recurves it'll head out into the open waters but a lot of these remnants will actually be lifting further north up into the Bering Sea and get mixed up into Alaska now a lot of times when you do have a recurving uh, typhoon, the first teleconnection that does go negative, which is your WPO, which is your West Pacific Oscillation, you can definitely see it by the time we get into your Halloween time frame, it goes negative, if not almost significantly negative, into uh, down here towards the, about the November the 5th time frame. So if we take a look at the overall temperature anomalies and what that looks like for the US, as the WPO goes negative, that'll actually send the colder air, a colder push of air into our western regions, reinforcing that cold shots into the western parts of the U.S., while much of the central and eastern two-thirds remains warm. And that's for the first couple of days of November. So right now, we've got a fairly stable, if not strong, polar vortex. A lot of the, at least, Arctic air is bundled up there into the Arctic and uh but i do feel like this recurving typhoon is going to be the beginning stages that could alter or call it consenting impulses and cause this polar vortex to buckle when it does buckle a lot of the warmer air lifts further to the north and colder air sinks further south and i feel like again the the, the recurving typhoon is just going to be the beginning stages because this is if you take a look at the overall uh, 10 millibar way up in the stratosphere. We got to go all the way up in the stratosphere now. So this is what it kind of looks like right now with this strong polar vortex. You can see all the cold air is locked up into the Arctic regions. But a significant change happens by the time we get into, say, your November the 7th time frame. So we have that initial impulse of the WPO going negative. But up there in the Arctic, all this warmer air lifts further north, sending all the warmer air back into the Arctic regions, causing the polar vortex to disrupt and starts the beginning stages of some of the much, much colder temperatures pushing down towards the U.S. Now, this is up in the upper regions. This is the higher latitudes up here into the stratosphere. So it's not an instant reaction. There's going to be a lag time with this system, but this is going to be the beginning stages of what could be a, a colder push especially as we push towards the middle and to the end of the month of november so if we take you through all the way to november the 10th time frame so as as we get kind of get a spike in temperatures up in the arctic we see these positives over the top right so we got all this positives over the top with these troughings trying to set up underneath that's the beginning stages of a colder push trying to push into the United States through the mid latitudes and has to get through all layers uh, of the atmosphere. So remember correctly when, when we had our first initial recurving typhoon, it sent a lot of moisture in some beginning stages of that atmospheric river into our Western regions, but especially into Northern California, I feel that's gonna happen again. So down the road, especially, this is the overall precipitation over the next two weeks, we could be looking at some more healthy rains coming back in the picture for portions of California complements of that recurving typhoon. But it was also the indications where this also set the stage for Fiona that formed, sending all that 20 inch rain amounts in portions of Puerto Rico. And if we take a look at the overall Caribbean for the next two weeks, 
Yeah, but down there towards Puerto Rico has got a lot of rain, if not almost close to double digit rainfall over the next uh, two weeks, indicating a very active uh, Caribbean. So if we take you to the Caribbean and look at some of these rain amounts just over the next two weeks, we've got a very active time frame with the vertical velocity index showing all kinds of greens in this area with this uh, Kelvin waves coming across. So this whole area is going to be sending if not, if, if you don't even have a tropical storm form in this area, it's still going to be sending copious amounts of rain into portions of Puerto Rico, like into Jamaica. All these areas looked really elevated for significant rainfall amounts just up over the next uh, two weeks. Now, is there anything tropical going to be coming out of that? Well, if we take a look at some of the ensemble guidance, we can actually see over the next 10 days, yeah, the latest EPS guidance has does hint of a favorite area and this is typically where you would see a late season type storm if something were to form this time of year and we've got more and more ensemble members so and hey yeah we could be looking at looking at a possibly another named storm that might come out of this region in fact the national hurricane center has highlighted this region there's actually two regions that give us a 30 percent chance over the next five days, especially down here into the Western Caribbean with all that just active tropical type moisture down here. So the longer this kind of festers in this area with that positive over the top, with remember the positives over the top, it helps lower the pressures underneath. So yeah, we'll have to be, have to be watching the, the Western Caribbean for potentially our next uh, tropical system that might come out of that. But further to the North for the next, uh, first 10 days of November with that negative WPO in place, man, we've got plenty, <laughs> plenty of snow that's gonna be on the table for the first 10 days of November, all the way through where you have experienced a lot of snow as of late for the last week or two. We've got a lot more coming for portions of Washington and Oregon, portions of Nevada here into Idaho, especially into Montana. Uh, back into Wyoming, we'll sneak it into the Rocky Mountains, filters into portions of northern Arizona, as well as parts of New Mexico in the ski country, so that ski lovers will be loving it for the next uh, first 10 days of November. But let's take you, take you through further than that. So once we get past, like, say, the 10th of the month, typically a leading indicator when you have a negative WPO, the EPO will follow. So it's a step down process. And with that pulse of just the polar vortex going to be disrupting, we should start to see the EPO start to go negative. And that's exactly what we see after we get towards the 10th of the month. So once we get towards the middle to the latter half of November, we do see the EPO turning significantly negative. That pretty much elongates over the eastern two thirds of the US sending that colder push of air into those regions. So, and also at the same time, we've got looking at the NAO, which is your North Atlantic oscillation, that actually goes negative. So as the EPO, as what will send those pulses of colder air further into the US, it'll have some sort of blocking mechanism too with that Greenland blocking taking shape with that negative NAO, that will help amplify the colder push towards uh, further south into the US and especially the AO, which is your Arctic Oscillation. We're seeing a lot of te teleconnections as we get deeper into the month of November. And I think this is the beginning stages of what's gonna kick off this is what will be the recurving typhoon out there into the West Pacific. So, and this will, could be, we can even could possibly take it a step further than that. This could actually even amplify into a stratospheric warming event. I'm not really saying this could happen, but we're starting to see the beginning stages of at least of an elongation of the polar vortex. Remember, this is what amplified the, the recurving typhoon is what happened before re amplified the, 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 the rim, the, the the feature of Fiona developing. And once that sent off into Nova Scotia, that push Pushed, altered the weather pattern and pushed the polar vortex and sent the first piece of Arctic air into the United States. That's what started the, the first push of colder air just a couple of weeks ago that sent all those colder temperatures and record temperatures all the way down to the deep south. It's because of what that recurving typhoon did and we're gonna essentially have that again. So it's gonna be a step down process through the month of November, but I do feel this is gonna be the, the beginning stages 
of what's to come to a much more colder look as we push deeper into November. So if we take a look through the last half of November, we start to see that blocking right towards the 22nd of the month. And we start to see a lot of blocking happening with that negative NAO, like I showed you up here in Greenland with more positives over the top, that'll help push the troughing underneath and push some of that colder push and really kind of be elongating more or less into the Eastern two thirds of of the us by then if all that takes place as we get towards the say end of november towards that last half of especially the last week of november we start to see more ridging more of a positive pna over the western parts of the us now once that polar vortex kicks in and has that more of a elongation sending that colder air to the united states that'll also drop the snow line a little bit further south so we could be looking at some some uh, fairly decent snow mounts by then by the time we get into the upper great lakes into our upper portions of the ohio valley upper portions of the mid-atlantic as well as portions of new england especially into ontario and quebec if all that comes to fruition which i think we it's going to as as with that recurving typhoon is just going to be setting the stage of what's to come in the month of november so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel catch the latest update why i protect you before and after the storm